it seems like the excitement in the automobile space does not abate. And you know what? A lot of that excitement remains focused on SUVs. One brand in particular that's really been killing it off late is Tata Motors. Yes, what a huge, massive turnaround we're seeing at the company. Every new product being appreciated for itself and more importantly, for its design. The new Tata Punch, it opens up a really almost a new segment in many ways. That's a car that we've had our eye on for quite a while. And we are getting, getting deeper into understanding the story behind its design today with Martin Ularik, who heads design, of course, for Tata Motors globally. Martin, it's great to see you. And I appreciate your time at, uh, you know, at a point where I know things are really busy for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're very excited by the, by the punch as well. Excitement doesn't begin to cover it, I think, for a lot of us because, uh, you know, firstly, when the concept car came out at the Auto Expo last year, um, I know there was a lot of promise from, from your, uh, you know, former colleague Pratap about how it's a lot of that will translate to the production model. We believed him simply because we'd seen that happen with the Harrier, we'd seen it with the Altros. Uh, now, you know, actually having it to market, um, I know is a, is a moment of pride for the company. How important was it to get that right, to get this almost like a wow factor, right, with the first look that one has of the punch. Yeah, we're very conscious of that. I mean, as we were developing this product, uh, you know, over, over the duration of its uh, sort of development, uh, even when we were previewing uh, the car with uh, both the concept, which was the H2X, then with the, with the show car, which is more or less a, a real preview of the production car, which was the HBX, which was at the Auto Expo, as you said. And then finally, with the production vehicle, we're always very conscious of the fact that we want to deliver on the promise of what we, we show to the public. So we had to do that with a, with a varying degree of confidence that you know, we could deliver on all the aspects of what the concept and the theme and of course the quality is. Keeping with that theme then, you know, I think color and, and you know, a lot of exaggerated elements, they always play into an SUV identity. Uh, I know as, as a product segment, you could have easily said that, oh, you know, for such a requirement in the market, we can always go to the hatchback space. Why was it important for this to be an SUV? Well, when we were developing the product, even in its concept stage, uh, we did a lot of studying in terms of uh, the market and the consumer and the values of, of consumers. And one of the pillars that we have as a brand is safety. You know, our safety ratings are, are a big attraction and a big pillar for our overall brand. And safety conveys then a sense of quality. So that's the first uh, element of it. Obviously, SUVs and crossovers are a global trend, and we've seen that accelerate in, in all markets, including the Indian market. And if you combine these factors, what we wanted was to create a, a vehicle in a, in a, in a compact uh, segment, in a compact envelope size-wise, but that conveyed safety, uh, protection, but also this feeling of, of freedom, a feeling of individuality and expression. And because we were trying to create a product that is very young and hard, it all came together. It was a very natural sort of, uh, you know, a number of vectors coming together, you know, to create a, a kind of a vision. So when we looked at it, you know, SUV character is a very strong pillar in our pro portfolio product range, you know, with the Harrier, the Safari, the Nexon. And this is another product that complements that family. It's a natural sort of addition. Uh, a natural sibling to the, to the portfolio. And as I said earlier, you know, the safety factor, the safety aspect, that feeling of freedom and that feeling of protection all added up to create the sum of, you know, what is the recipe that makes the punch, I think, a, a, a success. You know, I had to catch my breath the first time I saw the HBX. And I have to tell you that looking at the car behind you there, uh, it has the same emotion and the same feeling. It is bloody good looking. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, you know, now comes the part about uh, showing us on the car itself why this is an SUV and you know why we shouldn't call this a cross hatch or anything else. Yes, um, so when we were designing it, starting at the front, uh, the first thing is you know conveying a sense of SUV-ness. So the, the first obvious thing is the protection of the of the cladding, you know, creating a volume that is really protective. Then you have the, the headlamp cluster. And it's, it's obviously a split headlamp, but the main headlamp cluster is inset in the bumper. So you can see there's a number of chamfers around it, and it really looks like it's protected. So this technology, this very high-tech uh, element of the vehicle, you know, conveys, again, the quality, but at the same time, looks like it won't be damaged in some, if in the instance of an accident. 
And then at the upper part of the grill, we have the DRLs, and they are complemented by the humanity line, which is the sort of jewelry of the vehicle. So this is a very sort of, you know, premium area. But what it does is because it's very slim, it again makes a car look much wider. If you, if you sort of zoom out of the vehicle in a sort of direct front view, most of the lines are running horizontally left to right. And what it does is optically proportionalized, it makes a, a very narrow vehicle in terms of just dimensions look much larger than it actually is. And then going around, going around the product, this is a sort of you know, first rule of car design is stance. Stance and proportion are key to a successful exterior design. So when we were designing it, we really did a lot of work with the platform development in terms of positioning the, rear, the wheels in the four corners of the vehicle and conveying a sort of short overhang. So it has a compact sort of dynamic to it. Of course, you know, those wheels, the position and, and all that is, is complemented by the wheel arches. So again, you know, nowadays, it's very difficult to, to create a offset, you know, especially on a small vehicle with this track. But I think the designers did a very good job in the sense that you do get that sort of, you know, strength in the wheels. And that conveys that, again, that power and security and protection that, that really is what an SUV is all about. Tell me this, Martin, you know, you spoke about how this fits into a family of vehicles. It has to be the sort of baby in that, you know, Nexon, Harrier, right. Safari, Lima. And, and that's very obvious to see. I mean, when you look at it, you straight away know it belongs there. Uh, what part of this becomes individually just for the punch, do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, we always think about it, as you said, you know, a family. And if this is the sort of younger sibling, if you know, if you're if you're in a in a in a sort of family unit, maybe the younger member of the family is a little bit more dynamic, you know, being younger, a bit more lively, a bit more extravagant. So when we were designing the punch, rat, right? some, is, is, is that what you're in saying? Some ways, sorry, is that what you're saying that it's it's the brat of the family, <laughs> a little bit more, you know, outspoken and naughty. Yes, I think it should be. I mean, everything is a little bit exaggerated. Everything is a little bit more of a caricature. And also it can be bolder. It can, it can be a little bit more extrovert. So obviously, you know, the fact that, you know, we're pre pre presenting the vehicle with a two-tone paint color, but also the paint palette in terms of the colors that we're offering, you know, are much more sort of, you know, lively, dynamic, colorful, you know, extrovert and so forth. And I think all of those elements added with the sort of, you know, the quality level and the sophistication that you bring with an SUV, brings actually a very compelling package. You know, all of this was, you know, during the development and obviously, you know, the design department, you know, tries ideas and, you know, experiments. And, you know, as we were developing it, we, we thought about, you know, should we raise the level of the character? Uh, you know, what should we emphasize? What should we decrease and so forth? And as we were playing with those tolerances, you know, we found that sweet spot that everybody agreed was, was just right for this car. Tell me this, that, you know, the, the proportions, you mentioned the color palette, it obviously talks to a, you know, like a, a very young or young at heart audience. Um, it's also very urban. Now, from that perspective, and yet balancing out the requirements of, you know, being an SUV, uh, what parts became important, like wheel travel or ground clearance, or, um, you know, maybe even a, dare I say, approach or departure angle? Oh, no, all of those things were must-haves. Uh, you know, when we were studying it, obviously, you know, the, the capability from an off-road, not just visually, but actual legitimate capability, ramp angles were all respected. We did a lot of tolerance work uh, on that. And we also looked at ingress, egress. And another, another aspect I would add about the overall proportion is, you know, the, I always say that the, uh, the windscreen and the A-pillar is quite upright. So when you look at the vehicle, um, it has actually a sort of command driving position. This was actually driven by the interior proportions. So when we were sitting in the vehicle, we really wanted to convey a, a lot of visibility, uh, a lot of safety, a sort of command driving position where you sit relative to the instrument panel and the doors. And, and this height here as well, you know, if you look, there's a, in SUVs, there's definitely a trend to, to sort of slim down the, the side window glass to make it more sportier. But actually we went the opposite way. We actually opened it up as much as possible and made a sort of form follows function uh, methodology. So if you look, the cabin is actually quite tall for a vehicle, for a, you know, what is now a trendy SUV. But actually, I think it creates a very unique proportion and the car doesn't look top heavy. But this was a lot of uh, work by the work, uh, by the development of our design team, uh, was just to get the, the, the function there, but at the same time, get the right balance when it comes to proportion.
I actually love the way the greenhouse looks. You're right. It conveys a sense of uh, uh, sort of heft and without being bulky. It looks, uh, you know, sort of ready for the job, if you will. Also mm. love the two-tone. Um, do you think that, uh, you know, this is, I know it's it's a, also a trend in the marketplace, having a two-tone uh, sort of a roof. But uh, right. do you think that it lends itself even more to to this footprint, to this size of vehicle? Oh, it definitely helps. I mean, one of the things as I was describing the vehicle, you know, creating this sort of, you know, command driving position, tall, we call it DLO. So it's it's the uh, it's yeah. the window graphic, but the two-tone helps it slim it. So, you know, whether you have a white roof or a black roof, if you opt for that, for that option, uh, it does help, you know, make the car look sportier and leaner. So there's a lot of sort of hidden visual tricks. You know, like I said on the front, you know, horizontal lines will make, uh, make uh, something look wider. At the same time, you know, sort of horizontal lines will make this car look lower than it actually is. It's like when you tailor a suit, you know, people ask why do suits have pinstripes sometimes? Well, it's obviously to hide, you know, the width <laughs> of, of the user. So again, those are all optical tricks that, uh, you know, a designer uses, whatever the medium is to, to communicate, you know, what they want, you know, in the product. Martin, I know that there's always this cliche about uh, automobile designers and door handles, you know, how you would rather not have them. Uh, talk to me about that rear door handle. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, when we were developing it, uh, you know, we, we investigated having a traditional door handle. But again, if you look at it, you know, one of the attributes that we think, you know, SUVs are in many ways the new sports car. You know, they're a lifestyle vehicle. And because, you know, we were trying to communicate a very dynamic product, uh, we decided actually to migrate the door handle uh, in for the rear door into the C-pillar. Now, this is something that we have also, you know, on other products. And, uh, and in the end, you know, the kind of communication is it's, it's a kind of three door, but obviously it has the function of a, uh, of a four door, five door, you know, as you, as you describe it. So I think it helps overall, you know, when you have, you know, this width, this roof line, uh, kicking down and then you have the shoulder line kicking up and it makes it a sort of natural position to to package package the door handle now this was also you know one of the aspects that we had to really develop with, uh, with both engineering and the design team over over the, the product development was you know housing that that uh, you know that me mechanism in the c pillar but at the same time making sure that the, the person in the rear isn't uh, claustrophobic you know that they they where their head is where their sight lines are makes the most sort of visibility in terms of enjoying the visit. You know, it shouldn't be a car that's designed, you know, exterior in. Uh, it's actually the other way around. The interior is where the user is and the interior, the, the person has to actually uh, have the right experience. So, so that was very influential and it was a sort of inside out, outside in, you know, sort of constant push and pull uh, to get, get the right balance and get the, get the right uh, sort of, you know, look. Right. So as, as I said that, you know, you've had experience with, uh, you know, a different model with the same kind of door handle. So I know those learnings would have gone into it. We'll talk more about the interior because you mentioned the cabin, but um, advantage of being in your studio, I think let's show off the turntable and uh, look at the rear of the car as well, because, um, you know, you were talking earlier about how it's so important to get it right for some part of the cars to be sort of, you know, a little bejeweled, a little bit, um, you know, ornamental without being that in an extra flashy sort of a way. So I see that, you know, there's understated use of shiny metal elements, but those those tail lights and the way that the bumper has been designed, to me, again, it conveys a lot of muscle, a lot of strength, and yet it's very modern. Mm. Um, your, your take on that. Yeah, um, you know, as we were kind of walking around the vehicle, you know, what were the things we wanted to communicate? So first and foremost was proportion and stance. So when the when the this proposal was put forward, because we had actually all three design studios uh, making proposals, and in the end we have what was called the go with three. So we had three separate uh, design proposals, and this was obviously the one that we all agreed as soon as we saw it was this is the right one. Um, so I think the main thing is you know that the rear looks protected. It, it should look. It has to have a sense of strength. So again, you know, the, the cladding, the SUV nature and so forth. Then the, obviously the horizontal lines to emphasize the width to convey a much larger product than it actually is. And then with the taillights, we actually really position the taillights as far out as possible. And the, the exercise there is again, to communicate a real width optically. Uh, the other thing is the taillights are actually housed in the body side, not inside the tailgate. 
And then we created a sort of, you know, very compact tail light. But another interesting aspect is this line that wraps around it actually goes outward and then kind of wraps itself into the rear wheel arch. So again, this actually pushes the, the lights out in the corner of the vehicle out into the corner. And again, is sitting on top of this volume, which is the, the, the sort of stance where the wheels are. And then in terms of the taillight design, you know, that's now an area where you can really communicate PQ, which is perceived quality, and, and, and identity. So, you know, the tri arrow pattern, which is, a, you know, kind of a little subtle design signature that we have in all of our products, uh, and something that we really want to, you know, accentuate with impact design is, is you know, inspired by a jolly pattern. And at the same time, it's, it's a very identifiable graphic. So when people see this vehicle on a down the road aspect, you know, with the lights on, uh, they will immediately identify that as a Tata product. So it becomes not only a, you know, a design feature, which communicates a sort of high fidelity of design, but becomes a sort of brand communicator of what vehicle this is, even if they see it, you know, at a distance, you know, uh, whatever, the, whatever the distance is. And that pattern then is, you know, communicated throughout sort of Easter eggs throughout the car, whether it's with the graining, you know, on the interior, whether it's the speaker frets and so forth, or the, or the graphics on the seat pattern and so forth. So, so it's a sort of second, third read in the overall design sort of vocabulary of the car. Do we also have other Easter eggs in it like the Nexon had? Uh, well, they wouldn't be Easter eggs if we, we people have to, the, <laughs> the, the, the customer has to find them. So there are a couple of sort of hidden, hidden treasures in the car. But again, it's, it's the sort of, you know, uh, surprise and delight aspect of, of design where, you know, it's not just, you know, the first read of the vehicle, but it's actually as you're living with the vehicle, you find that there's other aspects that you can appreciate. And then in hindsight, you see them and you go, oh, OK, that's another layer that makes the experience of, of, of ownership, you know, joyful. Well, I'm getting my hands on the car tomorrow, so I can't wait to discover that for myself. <laughs> I have to tell you, though, that taillight, um, you know, the, the metal work around it is almost like a housing, but without being a housing. So I, I really love it. It looks it adds a lot. Uh, and to and the again, cars, you know. Like, this area, like, you know, we talked about the front, you know, the tail lamps communicate, um, uh, you know, a sort of quality and PQ-ness. But the main thing is that because it's an SUV, you want it to look like it's protected. So the, the sheet metal has to look like it's actually protecting, you know, this element. So it has to be sort of inset, at least, you know, communicate that inset feel. And again, that protection and SUV so it's just like the, the, the user or the, the consumer in the vehicle has to feel protected. All of these sort of high fidelity areas have to feel protected, just like the customer. I know with the Nexon, you had already sort of crossed that challenge of, you know, bringing all of these SUV elements and yet staying in that sub four meter sort of footprint. This car is even more compact. So I know that, uh, you know, the challenge would have still been there. But to pull off that correct proportion and stance, uh, I know while it's not easy, um, what besides the, the sort of sub four meter ness of it was a constraint? Um, I think it was, you it know, ultimately, it, it, I wouldn't call it a constraint, but it was definitely a challenge was to, to communicate uh, a roominess inside. Because, you know, designing the exterior, I think is a relatively straightforward exercise. You just have to sweat it out, as I said, proportion and stance. So you start with the wheel positions. How does the body sit on the wheels? And, you know, even before we were doing what I call the styling aspect, uh, the design team was auditing the platform and also giving feedback to engineering and working in collaboration to find that sweet spot where the car looks like it's balanced. So that's, a, that's what I call the design part, which is, you know, proportion. The other aspect in the design part, before we get to, you know, the styling aspect, which is lines and the theme and, and so forth, is, you know, uh, ergonomics. So, you know, as you said, you know, in a four meter space, this is a very compact space, but what you want is that the user on the interior feels like they're not claustrophobic, that they have roominess getting in and out of the vehicle, you know, ingress, egress is very important. Comfort is very important, especially for the, for the rear passengers as well. Again, you know, sometimes, you know, we focus very much on the, the front two seats, uh, the people sitting at the, 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 for, the front half of the vehicle, and you know the instrument panel and the console and so forth but it's just as important to to consider the the rear passengers so that was a very big part and i think that was the biggest challenge was you know in this tight envelope was to communicate 
and actually convey a feeling of space and security and, and not a feeling of claustrophobia. And then, you know, comes down to actual space too, right? Because inside the cabin, you mentioned that you could have tried and maximize the kind of space that you're getting. Um, so the balance between the space for passengers and the space for, for luggage or, or cargo, That's right. uh, how did you achieve that? Yeah, um, again, it was a sort of balancing act proportion-wise. You know, we gave ourselves a target, which we thought was, you know, uh, uh, you know a, a minimum in terms of luggage space that we offered the customer. And as you said, you know, uh, you know, you have to create that, but at the same time, you also made actually a, quite a, an angled uh, rear window. Uh, it's not upright, uh, and we felt that that was the right balance, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, offering the the storage space, luggage space, you know, for for the users, but at the same time, not losing that sporty character. And again, that helps the sense. But I'll tell you, during the design development, for instance, this angle went up and down. Uh, numerous times in, in clay models, you know, before we, we found the right balance. And the other part of the interior, which gets so much attention these days, Martin, is obviously all the technology that has to come with connectivity and the touch screens and then, you know, virtual clusters. Um, you obviously still had a cost target here or a price target. So balancing that part then. Yeah, um, you know, our consumers and, uh, you know, uh, the, the market at large is extremely sophisticated and we live day to day with, with consumer electronics. So our expectations when it comes to connectivity uh, in terms of, you know, effortless, less this sort of intuitive interface with, with technology, uh, people take it for granted. So as you said, you know, developing a car that's in a specific price point, you know, uh, and is a, in a competitive price, you know, that becomes the challenge for not only designers, but the overall team that develops the, the product. So, so it was important that, you know, we offer the customer that, that sort of, you know, minimum entry point, you know, in terms of connectivity, but at the same time, you know, mindful that we don't drive the costs of the vehicle up. Uh, this is actually one of the fundamental roles that a designer has, you know, a, a, a design team can create a vision, but, you know, to translate that vision into a production vehicle, that's the ultimate challenge. And, and I always say the team has to sweat it out. So every aspect of the vehicle, you know, goes through that, uh, you know, costing process where, you know, we want to offer product value, but at the same time, not at the detriment of the overall price proposition, you know, that we want to, you know, introduce the product into. So again, it's a, it's a balancing act where, you know, you don't compromise your design vision or the product, but at the same time, you know, you have to design responsibly. So, so it was a challenge. I mean, designing a, a vehicle of this segment in this size uh, and at this price point is always, I think, a much more bigger challenge than designing a, uh, you know, a luxury vehicle because you have these constraints. But at the same time, I think, you know, looking at the vehicle overall with the, with the result and the product we have, I think, you know, everybody who worked on it can feel very proud with, with the result. Oh, I definitely think you should. It looks great. And, and you're right. I mean, the, uh, the, the big challenge is to get it right in that absolutely sort of tight situation and then perhaps the, uh, the feeling of pride is even more when you do get it right. Uh, the temptation though, when you say, you know, when it comes to, look, how do we balance these different um, sort of cost targets and equations? Was the temptation for you or for the interior design team on the side of, let's say, oh, should we go for a bigger screen? Or was it on stuff like, oh, should we try a different material? Like where, where do you start to get greedy? Um, I think, you know, when we were designing the interior, uh, and we looked at the des various design themes and proposals. One of the first things was, again, you know, it's sort of, you know, what is your uh, pyramid of, of targets in terms of, you know, what is your priority? So first one was feeling of safety. So, you know, the, the, the user has to feel like they're in a sp safe space at the same time in a command driving position. So as we said, you know, how you sit, how much visibility you have, uh, where you sit relative to the road, you know, the, your sight lines and all that. That was the first priority. Then it's conveying a larger vehicle than it actually is. So if you look at the instrument panel, all of the lines on the, on the IP or instrument panel, as we call it in design, are running horizontally. And then we have this tech shelf, which is where the screen is mounted and the vents are actually hanging from it. So this, uh, this again, communicates a very, we call it a tech shelf. And, and the reason behind that was, again, high perception of quality. And one of the real targets that, uh, that I remember, you know, when we were setting out the brief was we have to communicate uh, extremely high level of perceived quality. 
this vehicle, you know, whether it's the door panel or the seat or, or any aspect of it, the fidelity of how the pieces come together. So even the graining, you know, of the plastics and the way pieces fit together, the fit and finish and the gaps and the shot lines, again, it's, it was a real focus on quality. For me, you know, even though the vehicle sits in a, in a, in a very competitive segment, it has to really be world-class when it comes to quality. And color, how much of a role does color play on the inside, just as it has on the outside? A, a, big, a big part, as you see, you know, with the instrument panel and with the seats and the door breakout, you know, color is, is one of the contrasting elements. So it's a way to control quality. It's a way to control character and environment. And, uh, you know, we're offering, uh, I think, a pretty broad uh, selection of, of colors exterior-wise and also trim levels interior-wise that give the customer the ability to, to pick which persona they are, uh, which avatar they are, and which vehicle communicates their character. You know, ultimately, you know, the vehicle is in many ways an avatar for, for the user's, you know, character. I like that. The color of the back is also kind of going in that world right now. And I love it. By the way. I love that color. Uh, I could go on talking to you about this. I think uh, you probably know this about me already, uh, Martin, but I know I should try and sort of, you know, let you get back to your work day. Uh, last thing then, which I always ask, uh, which is your favorite design element inside or out or both? Uh, looking at the car, I mean, you know, I've been looking at the car for a while now. Uh, you know, uh, during the design development. And as you, as you can imagine, you know, you sort of, you know, the impact fades. But now I'm, I'm very excited to see it on the road. And uh, the, one of the images that, you know, what I'm seeing now, you know, in its environment, out in the wild, as you would call it, uh, is how the car sits and how it, it just, it's a complete package. You know, it, it has a strong stance, it, it has a strong character, but at the same time, it's really communicating a sort of uh, fresh air, liveliness, character aspect to it uh, through the colors. And, and at the same time, it's communicating a real feeling of quality. So I think it's all of those elements coming together. And I, again, the, the aspect that I really like about it now is just seeing it on the road and, and the way it stands out you know, in its environment. That's the, that's the most exciting part for me right now. Can't wait to uh, to share notes with you on that once that does happen and you see a lot of them on the road. Um, I'm sure that there is going to be a mad rush for this car because of you know everything that we're already hearing in the buzz that we're picking up leading up to the launch. Uh, but many congrats to you and the team and also thank you for letting us in. Thank you. Thank you uh, for, for having the very uh, nice conversation and I'm looking forward to experiencing the car with you. I can't wait to drive it. I also hope that things change quickly and we can travel and, and sort of spend time with you in person as well. Uh, but again, thank you so much and all the very best with uh, the punch and its rollout. Thank you. Thank you.